Hi friends, welcome to Calm in the Chaos Homeschool. My name is Devine and I am super excited about today's video. It is the time of the year where we are thinking about curriculum for the next year. Today's video is a collaboration between me and a bunch of other homeschool moms hosted by myself and Shauna from Homegrown Homeschool. So we thought that we would share all the different ways that we plan for our new school year. So don't forget to check out the playlist below if you'd like to see a bunch of ways that other homeschool moms plan their homeschool year. So I'm just going to take you through my process of how I begin that process. All right, so welcome to my planner. Yes, I use the computer for my planning. I love Google Docs and Google Spreadsheets, so that is what I use. I will link the forms that I use below in case you are the kind of planner who likes to use things like this. However, you could also print them off and use them as paper copies. So just so you know, I will link all these things in the description below. So my first step or the thing that I'm doing nonstop and especially in my first year of homeschooling, I started by making a list of all the curriculum that I saw that I found interesting. So throughout the year, as I was watching different YouTube channels and seeing different curriculum, anytime I saw a curriculum that looked interesting, I would type it here on this form that I had here. So just to show you an idea, we have our language arts, things that I was interested in looking at, the math that I found interesting, the science I found interesting, social studies, any notes that I wanted to add, Bible, language, and art. And I'm going to have to say I have not looked at this list really so much this year. It was more last year that I was looking at this because as I was trying things out for myself, I started to figure out more what I enjoyed and what I want to continue on doing and more what I want to move into. And it was just easier to have a better idea of whether or not a curriculum would work for me as I went along. So if you are new to this process, or even if you are not, I do recommend that you keep a notebook or a notepad or something where you write down all the curriculum that you find interesting so that when it's time to start planning for the new year, you can take a look at your list. And by that time, you might know, oh, BJU is not going to work for us. I can take that off. Or I don't think this is going to work based on what I've seen since I put this on here. And then you'll be left with a list of things that you can research and see if you want to look into for the upcoming school year. The second thing that I do around this time before I start purchasing curriculum is I give my students or my children a survey. So this is the survey that I used last year and I will link this below in case you want to use it and modify it. And so I had them write their name and I had them rate how they felt about the different parts of our homeschool. So they wrote down some information and I would look at the information and keep it in mind when I am planning for the new school year. So I'll link that below. That's the one I used last year. This is the one that I use this year. And at the beginning of the survey, what I did was I actually typed out every single thing that we did this year, just so my kids could see what we did and would keep it all in mind when they're answering the questions. And then I just put their initials and all and stuff behind behind each subject because not everyone did every subject. And I just highlighted it and I highlighted the one that I gave to each child so that they would just see the subjects that they were working on so it wasn't too confusing. But I thought this was a good way for them to just look at the year and what we've done and kind of be able to answer the questions more accurately or fully keeping everything in mind. So that is just a list of things that we have done. I don't know if I'll include that for you on the blank copy, but... I don't know if you want this list, I guess you could ask me for it. But anyways, that's all the things we've done this year, a lot of things there. And so then I had my students fill out, what are your three favorite subjects or topics? What are your least favorite subjects or topics? What did we do during our school year that you'd like to do more of? What would you like to do less of? How do you like to learn? Thankfully, most of them picked at home as a family, meaning together, group work, which is what I really enjoy. And I hope to continue that as long as possible. Is there activity or routine you'd like to add to our day? Is there an activity or routine that you'd like to add to your school day? What's the most important thing to include in your school day? What are you interested in learning about next year? What are your favorite things in our morning basket? What are your least favorite things in our morning basket? 
and anything else you want to tell me as I plan out our next school year. So I give that survey to my children. And now to the document that I use year round. I'm too much of a planner. I love to plan. I plan too far ahead. And I know that about myself, but I really enjoy it. And it doesn't upset me when I have to change my plans. I just really enjoy planning ahead. So don't think that you have to do it this way, but this is how I do it. So here is my spreadsheet. All right, so you'll notice on this form that it says homeschool curriculum choices for years 2021 to 2026. And then I have all these different pages here at the bottom. And I will say that they are mostly filled out. However, like I said, I am not upset if plans change. This is just an idea of what we might be doing at those points. I am open to change and I'm open to feedback from my children. So just so you know that ahead of time. So I have my children's, usually their names here, but I just took those out. This is what we did this year. So I have a sixth grader, I have a fifth grader, I have a third slash fourth grader. He's fourth grade, but he does a lot of third grade stuff. So I'm not sure where we're at in his grade. And then I have a third grader. And then I have along the side, I have all the subjects that we are doing. And so basically I'm going through and I'm thinking about what we want to do for the next year. Now, in this case, I am looking at my last year and I will say that I have most of my new year filled out. However, I want to do a curriculum reveal and all that with you guys. So I don't want to show you that spreadsheet, but this one looks almost exactly the same as that one. So what we did for Bible this year or what I was planning on doing, I had sunlight. I have sunlight BC. We were reading, we were still doing the Bible section from those and I had picked up my 24 family ways so we actually have been doing that mostly and then I have a few devotionals that I'm adding in and we kind of mix it up for Bible. I get bored if I'm doing the same thing for too long, but that was kind of the general plan for this year. And that tells me I don't need to buy more things. I already have enough things. I do not need to buy anything for Bible. I have what I need for Bible. And then here was our plans for our math. So she had teaching textbooks four, Math Mammoth three continued. This is our second year working on that. And this I just added because we just changed it recently, the good and the beautiful math four. So it's kind of a record of what we've done as well as what I was planning. And then my fifth grader is doing teaching textbook six, Math Mammoth four, the last bit of that, and Beast Academy, and then teaching textbook three, teaching textbooks three. And then for writing this year, we were doing IEW, style and structure, year 1A with the girls, and the boys are doing language arts for a living education, level three. So that's got that covered. So for grammar, I have fix it grammar for my girls, and I did not do anything for my boys because it is covered here, and I didn't think I needed to add more to that. Spelling, we have Spelling UC, and then I did add Spelling UC for the son who needs more spelling practice, and these two kids, I didn't feel like they needed extra spelling. Phonics, so I have a lot of phonics going on here. Oh, and I guess easy grammar is grammar, so put that up there. My fifth grader didn't need anything extra in phonics and grammar, and then I have Explode the Code for my boys. And then vocabulary. So I just wrote fix it grammar because it covers vocabulary. I'm not doing extra vocabulary with her since she is working so much on phonics and spelling. But this daughter, I added vocabulary for her because I felt like that could be a challenge for her. And so I did get some vocabulary stuff for her there. And the boys, I didn't want to add anything more for them. This is a lot of work for them already. So as you can see that this here is basically language arts, all of this. So this isn't technically writing, it's more language arts general. And then you could, so maybe I actually wanna add that, let's put that in there for you guys. Language arts. So language arts, if you have a general curriculum, it could go there. So this covers most different language arts. And then if you have more specific writing programs, grammar, spelling, phonics, and vocabulary, all add up to language arts. But you don't have to do every single one of these every single year for every single child because every child's different and they need different things. All right, so then we have, oh, there's reading. <laughs> reading is also part of language art. So I have Sunlight and Bookshark, C and D readers, so we're still finishing up BC, Sunlight, and we're starting CD, Bookshark. So we're doing those readers. And I had a little workbook story elements that I picked up for these two, my two girls here. And the boys are just doing some general readers. History, we're doing Sunlight moving into Bookshark and Story of the World 2 and 3 if we get to 3 or starting 3. 
and I have beautiful feet, early American history that's all mixed in there as well. Geography, we were doing my father's world, countries and cultures this year. Science, we were doing my father's world, animals and ecosystems, Noeo biology too, and Sassafras zoology on the side, just the audiobook version of that. We just listened to that during lunch. Handwriting, so what everyone is doing for handwriting. Social, emotional, definitely don't need to have that subject in your homeschool, but I had that for my girls this year. Big Life Journal for Kids is what they're doing. So art, definitely something you don't have to have if you don't want as a curriculum. My kids were just taking some art classes at our parent partnership program, so they all did art classes. And then one of my daughters, she likes to do art, so we added artistic pursuits, grades four and five for her. And then I put this here, so in red it means maybe do that. And we didn't actually add that this year, but we might add something like that next year. So red is just saying we might do that, but it's let's look into that further. And then I was teaching my children Chinese. So we did intro to Mandarin. And then on the side here, I just have supplies. So this was just helping me think of what supplies do I need to cover for those subjects. So I got duotangs for the Bible. I need one inch binders. I like to pull out some of their workbooks and I put them in binders so we don't have everything all the time. Um, I needed notebooks for the girls for this subject, more duotangs for the boys. So this is just kind of my area to record any specific supplies that I need for the curriculum that I am planning on purchasing. Okay, so I'm going to link this spreadsheet below and you can use it to fill out whatever subjects you want to do. Now, don't feel like you need to get full curriculums for every single one of these subjects to be homeschooling or to be doing things the right way. This is just how I set it up and you see I do skip some areas depending on my child so you do not have to get a curriculum for every single thing of these and depending on your homeschool style a lot of these could be integrated together if you're doing unit studies or maybe you just do a more natural um, more unschooling approach so this is just the more type a personality ones who like to plan everything out and keep in mind that this was my second year of homeschooling and I do feel like I still went a little overboard with my curriculum and with the amount of curriculum and I'm definitely cutting back slowly as I become more experienced with homeschooling but I'm generally happy with what I picked I did get some more workbooks than I think was necessary but I feel like having this here and having some more experience behind me, I'm going to get better as we go along with only picking one thing for each of these areas or maybe two at the most for some areas that we need some supplementation. So that is basically how I lay out my next school year. I cannot wait to share with you what I've picked for 2022, 2023, but we're just going to keep waiting on that a little bit. I have some curriculum reviews coming up. We're ending term two right now, so I'm going to be talking about how these things have been working for us at the end of term two. Also, you will notice that I do not have my morning basket subjects on here anywhere. I have a completely different spreadsheet for that and I think I'll be making a separate video for my morning basket subjects and how I plan those out. So definitely like and subscribe to my channel and hit notifications if you want to see my how I plan my morning basket video when that comes up. So I hope you found that video helpful. I hope it helps you to kind of have an idea of the steps that you can take in order to start planning your new school year and the things you might want to consider and just a way to keep yourself organized. I will link all the forms that I used below so that you can make a copy for yourself and you can adapt it to your own homeschool. And don't forget to check out the other videos in this collaboration. I will link the playlist right below in the description. Now, if you're not so much a on the computer planner like I am, I do have some homeschool planners in my Etsy shop. I will link the shop below and I will have a 20% off coupon just for you if you're watching this video. So definitely check out my Etsy shop and use the coupon for 20% off. Thanks for coming today. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you.